I've literally had one cup of coffee in my life, and it was in the guy was like, people fly all over the world to taste this coffee, and like he's holding the beans. He's like, this is this coffee, and I was like, it's this dog. Sh nah, get the f out of here. Where you been and where you going? This is Ari's travel show. Yeah, we're gonna talk about travel today. It's you. Hello, everybody. Welcome to You Be Trippin', uh, the podcast that takes you around the world. Today, uh, my guest is a stand-up comedian, a great stand-up comedian, one of the best in the world. Um, he has specials on YouTube called uh, This Year's Material, and... I hate myself. I hate myself. I hate um, myself. Also, one of the best uh, travelers in stand-up comedy, please help me welcome Joe List. Joe, where are you taking us today? Well, they really helped you. What? Uh, they really helped you welcome me. <laughs> they really I did. feel them helping. Yeah. No, I imagine them all at home really fucking going for it. Yeah. Uh, Peru. I went to Peru many you years went to ago. Peru. I've been to many places, of course. Yeah, you'll be back on this podcast. This is the first of many times you'll be on this podcast. Thank you. I appreciate um, that. Peru. Peru. Why'd you go? Why Peru? I've, I've wanted to go to Peru. Peru rules. It was the best. Uh, Peru rules. Uh, um. <laughs> One of the coolest trips, still one of my favorite places. And you know what's hard is now I'm married to a wonderful woman. We travel all over the place. Yeah, yeah. And my good best couple. trip ever is with my ex-girlfriend. You went with the chick. Yeah. Um, but we were exes. So it's kind of a long story I'll, I'll condense. You were already exes when you went with her? Yeah. Bold. So Bold move. I had this... <laughs> I had this woman I was madly in love with. We met. It was one of those, like, I was on stage at Caroline's bombing... And there was one person laughing in the back, and I said, I don't know who's laughing back there, but I'm in love with you. And then afterwards, she came up and was like, I'm the one who was laughing, and she was extremely attractive. That's how you met her? That's how I met her. Wow. So I told her I loved her before I had ever met her. Which, when you're young, a meeting story means so much to you. So much. Especially, you're right. I'm a romantic. I like movies. So I was like, this has to be the one. Because we got a story already. Exactly. You don't want to be like dating app. You don't want to be like... Um, my friend thought, hey, you're single, and my other friend's single. You should meet my friend. Well, exactly. That's like, a boring story. My now wife, Sarah Talamash, wonderful comedian and friend. What's your she, story? We just knew. I don't even remember meeting her. Right. Yeah, We exactly. were just comedians. Oh. We were just two comedians. She lived two blocks away. <laughs> I was like, I'd fuck her. I wouldn't Sucks. mind fucking her. And then she remembers meeting me. I'd She's fuck, like, I'd fuck her. Dan Soder introduced <laughs> us at the creek. I don't remember. I was drinking. And literally, it was just like, all right, well, you're two blocks away. I'm two blocks away. Fuck it. Whatever. We'll just date. Oh. That's our story. It would have been way... Oh, the other one would have been so much better. So then when Harry met Sally, it's just so like... You can make a, you did make a movie about that. It, yeah, it ruined... Let's, uh, take, let's go to Peru, dude. Let's not ruin this. Let's go to Peru. Okay, so anyways, long story short, we, we fell in love. We moved in. We dated. But she was a free spirit, which is what drew me to her. Did you ever shit in her shoe? Of <laughs> nah, no, that came after. Okay, that came shortly okay. after. But I did... <laughs> yeah. Spoiler alert or whatever. Spoiler I did alert. see her shit in Peru in my face. Okay. Well, so we're going to get to that. Okay. So she, anyway, she left me for Argentina. She moved to Argentina to go be Argentine? a teacher. Oh. No. And I was like, Argentina, New York? Um, <laughs> she went to Argentina to go be a teacher and do some kind of program, whatever they teach Wait, you. Wait, you broke up for that reason? Yeah. Were you already on the rocks? Or was that just no, like, no, I No, no, it was good. Life? But she's like, I'm not. The whole time she kept being like, I'm not here to live in New York. She was like, I love you and we're having sex. It's great. Uh, and she's was troubled a hard time in her life whatever um but she went to argentina and she's like we're not gonna stay i thought let's just stay together i'll come visit you whatever she wasn't into it so she so went to south america there. yeah so just before we get to peru so i was devastated obviously super heartbroken drunk this is when i shit in the girl's shoe this is when i got herpes <laughs> i just oh. went off the rails oh she did all that to you totally off the rails Actually, that that lost shoe is her fault yeah it's her fault oh um, yeah. I, I take no responsibility for any of that <laughs> behavior whatsoever. So all this happens. Then I got on Last Comic Standing Yeah. that Oof. season. I was all pumped, and I, got, I made it to, like, L.A. to the semifinals. When they called my name, I looked in the camera, and I said, I miss you, blank her name. Oh, no. Because uh, I was like, she's going to see this. Yeah. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah. Last Comic Standing is huge in Argentina. <laughs> well, she could stream it, whatever. <laughs> and I was messaging her being like, I'm going to be famous. I'm going to be a household name because I really thought. And you're in. You're part of the ride, baby. I'm, I'm, and you're gonna, I still love you, and I'm going to win her back. And then 
the show aired. I was completely edited out. Nobody told me anything. I just watched it. She watched it. Oh. I don't appear in there. Oh. Nobody warned me. But then shortly after that, she said, I've been doing some thinking, and if you really want to come down here and visit, she's like, I don't want it to be drama. I don't want to be whatever. We're not getting back together, but I'm, I could, I'd like to see you if you think you can handle that. And, of course, I was like, we're getting back together. <laughs> I was like, who needs? I was like, who needs last comic standing? And so she said, I'm gonna go to Peru. We could meet in Peru. And she said, I've always wanted to go to Machu Picchu, and we're gonna hike the trail. Most people don't hike. There's a more well-known trail. Is this it's one of the multi-day hikes? Oh, okay. Oh, it's like a seven-day hike. You're hiking like eight miles a day. I love these. It's I've, amazing. I've done a couple of these, and I just heard about one in Spain, France, Spain, obviously a big one. But yeah, like, yeah. But like these, I, I, I think they're all over the world. Yes. These like trails that I think I it was just was it with trade routes? What was it? Do you know? I think it was the I should know more and people are gonna be like, You fucking idiot. I think it was like an Inca trail. Was it like a pilgrimage thing or was it just like it's just a trail? I think it was to the city because right. it goes directly to Machu Picchu. And ah. it's a trail, it's a common trail, but much less common than I think it's just called Machu Picchu Trail. But this cause she's a big traveler too and did all this. That's stuff. almost like you want to go to that one. Oh, absolutely. The much they both go to Machu Picchu. Yes. So okay. So this is the better trip. It's funny because I just talked to uh, my friend Andrew Chavone. Yeah. His girlfriend, she's like, I did the trail, and I was like, I did too, and she's no. like, that's the rare one. No one, I've never met anyone that did it. And I was wow. like, I've never met anyone that did it. So it's a great trail. I highly recommend it. But so she set up the whole thing, and at this point, I hadn't really done much traveling like that. I had been to. I think maybe I went to Iraq. With the USO. Yeah, with the USO, with Nate Bargatze. And I saw that Scott picture, so at the creek. It's yes. such a cool bit. You guys are so young, oh, with their flak fun. jackets on. Yes, it was stolen, by the way. It was a gift for Nate, and he left it there, drunk. And then Rebecca <laughs> just took it. She just owns it now. It was my, it was my going away <laughs> gift to Nate. Not stolen, but he left it because he was, used to be a drunk. Yeah, too. yeah. But any jizz. So she put together the whole thing, and she hired this, uh, not higher but there's like a company that leads the trail it's like a a sherpa guy this guy named kike and then they have two guys with donkeys k-i-k-e yes i've seen it uh used and pronounced differently yeah i bet <laughs> um, this, i think i drew it on your forehead one night <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny because there's no in my cd i thanked him i thanked him and there's no till day, not a till day but a, a, a whatever accent on the typewriter, so it just says Kike in my CD. <laughs> Thanks, Kike. <laughs> it just says, thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Bethany. Thank you, Kike. Thank you, Ari. I couldn't have gotten through this without Kikes. <laughs> but anyways, his name was Kike <laughs> with an accent. And um, so they have, like, you know, you get, like, your own Sherpa guy. So, so and what do you got to hike with? Are you, you're hiking it. What do, what do you got to put on you? I hike with a backpack, with the, a regular backpack. Is So, you're, are, you're not bringing a sleeping bag? They take the shit. They have the big, so you have that big bag, you know, the huge bags. Yeah. The, the fucking four-foot real hiking bag that we hike with when we do... Um, Bobby Kelly. Uh, yeah. Uh, bushcrafting. Bushcraft party, party boys. Party boys. So they take those, they put them on the donkey, and they go up ahead. Sweet. And then when you get there, they have camp set up, and they're cooking lunch and shit. That's how I did it in Myanmar. So um, it's like they'll meet us. They'll, they know where you're going to be for lunch. Yes. They meet you for lunch. Then then they, then they you keep going. You go to dinner. Yes. So what do you got in your bag? A toothpaste, toothbrush? Toothpaste, toothbrush. Water. Uh, maybe some socks, water, some snack shit. And then this is hilarious. You'll love this. So at the time, I was like, I have a very finicky diet i eat like four things yeah so i packed my Damn, backpack how the fuck did you go to peru well i want to know what you ate okay yeah. i'm good in, in foreign countries when i have to be i'm good yeah so i had these mres like like army meals like macaroni <laughs> and cheese and spaghetti and meatballs and i fully intended to bring them and have the guy i was like i'll just make these and then the first day of hiking, you get there, and there's two Peruvian Sherpas that don't speak any English, and they're, like, cooking a fucking meal. You can't be like, would you mind tossing uh. my Kraft mac and cheese on there? <laughs> so I just had to go with it. Dude, embarrassment will get, get you to do a lot of stuff you won't do. Exactly. Exactly. They say in Judaism, where you're, like, an Orthodox Jew, you know you can't touch women from the opposite sex mm -hmm. um, if you're not married to them, um, or if it's, like, you know, your mom or something, but, like... Uh, they go like, what if somebody 
like shakes their hand in the in the secular world they don't know that they come in they shake your hand and the rabbi is like well i've had that happen at yeshiva university like a, some someone just in, it, they, you like turn it we pretend like you're writing the chalkboard you see it you're hoping they don't turn around and the, and you're like i keep seeing her she's just her hand is just out waiting oh god and it's like it's not worth a level of embarrassment to that person. right so you just quickly give them a and then you like get off yeah you gotta you, eat that meal can't you ask for forgiveness if you touch a broad yeah i mean Do you guys have forgiveness yes okay yes. i don't know we're not we're not fucking the internet <laughs> <laughs> well i know that's big in the uh some communities whatever yeah, yeah we don't have a box for it it's just like hey you got one on your tally whip on so anyways oh yeah. i went there and um so it was very cooking, exciting. what kind of shit are they cooking we had um a lot of soup there was always a soup of some kind um and i guess some kind of I can't remember really. Chicken shit, a lot of rice, a lot of soup, rice. a lot of fucking. Um, one day there was like a pasta dish. Um, I don't was know. This what else we were was this traditional food or was it just like, no, no it's just hiker food? No, it was like traditional Peruvian food and shit. Um, but a lot of soups, soups were big and there was soups and bread, Party, always, right? which was good. Yeah, but, yeah. That's nice. Um, and so I just ate it. Plus, I was trying to impress her. I was trying to win her back. So I was like, I'll do fucking anything. Um, but so the thing is, usually we didn't go on a, a just us to a private tour. We went on a group tour. Sure. But it just happened to be we were the only two. So we like just scored and got a private thing. <laughs> and you're like, yes. And she's like, fuck. <laughs> um, well, no. And it was also like the rain season, but we never saw any rain, which was incredible. But um, so we Every got Every vacation. Down there. It's just you're taking a chance that it's going to be a good, it's just going to be a good week. No matter what you do, it's like, yeah, if we caught four days of rain, we're fucked. But some places, isn't it funny? Like, you were just in Paris. Uh -huh. You want rain in Paris. England, London, Why? Paris, Wales. Are places that are synonymous with rain. Right. Which, like, rain, Paris, you, the streets get wet, the lights are illuminated. It's not that you want it to rain every day. Well, you wouldn't mind if but it did a little. Paris in the yeah. rain is romantic. Yeah. If you go to fucking Cayman Islands and it rains every day, you want to kill yourself. Right. I was jerking off a lot. The, uh, the geo tags on my computer read my computer, so it was all Pornhub, was all French girls oh, going, we, we. I'm were, like, perfect. I thought you were better than that. Uh, I'm, I'm not. Um, How old are you really? Aren't you like 59? How are you masturbating to porn this often? You're in France, dude. You're fucking looking at all these French chicks, and you're like, yeah, I, I got to get some release. I hear you. I hear you, you. You can't, you can't you do it in the, in, the, in the showers. They'll get stopped up. Yeah, I guess that's a good point. We need a we need a, a shower porn screen, so you can like jerk off in the shower. Two. Hey, let's get back to Peru. All right, let's go back to Peru. I would love to go back to Peru. So yeah, but don't you have this thing with travel that you're like, I can't go back there. I already went there. Yes. What is that? Let's talk about that for a second. I it's something I'm struggling with. You're like, I checked it off, but like you've had magical experiences traveling. Right. That house we went into. The next time you come, we'll talk about Ecuador. Mindo. But like. We would go, I would want to go back to that place. Yes. And yet, you'd be like, it's a waste because if I go back there, I'm not going to Peru. But here's the thing, though. Isn't that just ego? Yeah, it is. That's ego going, no, I want to get to multiple places. Right. So check things off so I can brag to people exactly. of how many countries you've been to. Or like, or I'll do this where I'm like, uh, now I've been to Paris, but I've never been to the French Riviera. So now I'm like, oh, I don't want to go to the French Riviera because I already checked France off. I have the same exact thing. What, what a dumb fucking way to live. I have the exact thing. It's ego. Ego is the enemy. Yeah, because I make lists of, of like the countries that you can like brag about. I'm the same way. I went to Berlin, but I was like, technically Germany's already on my list. I've already been there. Yeah. But I'm like, ah, fuck, it's I don't ego. want to go yeah. It's ego. And you got to get over that. Like, what? I've been, you want to be like, I've been to lots of places a bunch of times. Plus, if you want to do ego, you could be like, I've been to Peru twice. Like I've been to Kuwait. That's twice. right. That's well, how cool is it when you're like, yeah, I've been to France. I've been to Paris like t like twenty times. You're like, oh wow. Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Ori Shafir, and I'm a stand-up comedian, and I play rooms like this on occasion. And I'm doing my new stand-up comedy special April 26th and 27th in Washington D.C. Who wants to come out and see me record my new stand-up comedy special? Washington D.C. at the Capitol Turnaround, April 26th and 27th. Tickets are at AriShafir.com, and I'm gonna be all over the road. Let's see, real quick. Uh, uh, Cincinnati on April 1st, and then I'm just going to run through them. Cleveland, we added two shows. Columbus sold out. Grand Rapids, April 4th. Detroit, April 5th. Toronto, April 6th. Added a show. Uh, Halifax, added a show. The first show sold out, April 11th. Uh, Ottawa, April 12th. Rutland, New York, the 13th. Huntington, New York, the 14th. Austin, Texas, 420. My special 
on 4, 26, and 27th. I'm doing storytelling shows in May, May 9th and 10th at the Comedy Store in Los Angeles, and then uh, all over Australia. Melbourne, May 17th, Adelaide, uh, the 25th, uh, Canberra, Brisbane, Sydney. Get tickets at AriShapir.com. And you can check out Joe List. He has his own special called Enough for Everybody. It's on YouTube right now. Check that out. Joe is going to be also appearing in the following places starting in April. Burlington, Vermont, Buffalo, 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 Los Angeles, Indianapolis, um, St. Louis, Salt Lake City, Seattle, and that takes us through July. Go to jo comedianjoelist.com. Guys, on all my tickets are arishafir.com slash tour. Definitely come to this special Washington, D.C. And also subscribe to this podcast. You be tripping pod on YouTube. You be tripping pod on socials. And uh, subscribe wherever you listen. At you be tripping. Now let's get back to the episode where we don't talk about stand up. Yeah, that's a good point. I've, I've been to Paris three times. Wow. So I'm better than you. Here you go. Did you ever go for two Here weeks straight? Two weeks straight? No, I went for oh, eight days straight. Oh. Did you go to the French Open? No, you didn't. Did you go to the. Did you go to the. Some street that I went to? <laughs> Probably. Um, you didn't get to go to Circus Bakery because it was closed. You didn't get to go to Shakespeare & Co. because it was too many there people. There was a line. You didn't get to go to Notre Dame because it was burned down. I did that, though. Me and my people planned it. You weren't in the original meetings. Kike. <laughs> um, so we went down okay, there. Notre Dame. You know why it's the most visited site in Paris? Why? Hint. The Jews? Hint. Nose? What, what are we known for? Big noses? What else, though? This Money? Uh-huh. Money, greed, yeah, uh, yeah. Running show so business, why did, weather. Why does everybody go to Notre Dame? I don't know. I don't get it's it. Free. Oh, it's free. Yeah. I wasn't thinking. Should I yeah. let the dog out? <sighs> let like her out, but like, don't out. knock the fucking. See the tripod? Don't knock the yeah, tripod. But, oh, so you're saying do not knock the tripod over? Yeah. That's your. I should just open it wide enough for the dog to yes, get out, but yes. not move over the camera. Yes. Confirmed. Confirmed. Okay. Uh, look at my shorts. That's bad. Okay, okay. Yeah, you're going to carrot top that dick out on screen for sure. <laughs> All right, so we go to Peru. We haven't even got there yet. Okay. So I fly down there, and then this is hilarious. So it's you're young, you're naive, and she's. And I, I'm so excited Bandit, to meet don't her. knock the thing. Oh, Bandit. God. Bandit. Bandit, didn't you listen to us? <laughs> don't you listen? <laughs> you fucking you don't idiot. don't knock the thing. Um, so we go down there, and she says to me, this I is so stupid. I love you. I want stupid. you back. No, Come we're, on, so we're talking it. over... Um, over it was Skype at the time, and I'm all excited. The last weekend I did Skype. was with DeRosa and Norman, and I was going to meet. I'm like, I don't even care what you guys say. I'm going to get my love back. I was so excited. <laughs> I really thought I was like, I'm getting her back. And then she told me, "This is so stupid," but I was so naive to travel and anything she said, I would just listen to. She's like, "You should get an Ambien for the flight because it's gonna fuck you up." But looking back now, I'm like, it's south. There's not even like time zones at play, right? Because I was flying like a red eye, and so I got it's an behind you. So and we're going, yeah, it really is straight south. Yeah, it's pretty due south. Because it's on the west coast. Yes. So it's like due south. Yeah, it's, look at this line. That's, I mean, just inland a little bit, but like. So I got an ambient. Yeah, Peru, right there. I got an ambient, and there's Quito, where we flew oh, to. Yeah. So I get an ambient. I take an ambient on the flight, and like, I'm like, okay, because she just said it. So I was like, all right, it's like the stupidest thing. And then I take it, and I didn't know this. This is a different topic. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm a very long-winded. Yeah, part but of the trip, yeah. I take the uh, Ambien, and I didn't know all of a sudden you get a meal because I'd never flown international. <laughs> so I got to stay awake to get my meal. And if you take Ambien and stay awake, it's fucking rad. Oh, that's when you start living rules. a different life. You're like, woo! <laughs> that's the original DMT. <laughs> I was like, this drug fucking kicks ass. <laughs> you're cooking, you're flying for a little while and not remembering. Isn't Ambien the one where people like, they're like, I woke up and, oh, it was this story I heard. Somebody was sleepwalking on it, went down, uh, got a turkey cooked a turkey, ate it, went to sleep, woke up in the morning, saw a, just a cooked and eaten turkey and called the police. <laughs> it's like someone broke in and ate a turkey and left. Yeah, I think it's bad. I think it's dangerous. I mean, if you use it as prescribed or whatever, but yeah. you also have drug people. If you take Ambien <laughs> and stay awake, it's, nice. it's fucking kick ass. Okay, first thing in the morning, anyways. Ambien. So I take an Ambien. I land, and I'm getting there a few hours before her, like six or seven hours before her. I get to the airport. I flew to Cusco, uh, okay. which is a beautiful little town, and everyone warns you about pickpockets and all that shit. People make foreign countries sound like you're just going to get fucking stabbed and murdered. Yeah, right. I land there. I get a cab, and I'm shitting my pants because I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never flown to a fucking foreign country like this before. I've been to Canada, whatever. 
And so I get there, I get in the cab, and I say, here's the thing. We're staying at a youth hostel. The cab gets, drives around cobblestones. It's beautiful. I'm taking it all in. I'm blown away. We get to, like, the top of this hill, and the road is, like, a really narrow, one-way cobblestone. And he goes, I can't uh, take you down there. He's like, I drop you here. It's right down there. And I go, okay, great. Perfect. And whatever it was, uh, 15 Peruvian dollars. I don't even know what they're called. I was like, here's a 20. I get, all I had was American money. So I give him a 20, and he goes, oh. <laughs> he just drives and it's like a whole it's like the old joke about foreign money like I think I gave him like 5,000 bucks he literally went up over the curb like swinging through people and he pulled up onto the sidewalk and like let me go at the door he gets out he opens my door and he's like thank you welcome Sir. and I'm like I definitely gave him way too much money just then um, I love when you're like I think I ruined the economy here but uh, it cost me almost nothing. Yeah, it was like it was literally a twenty dollar bill. So he's shit. So then I, <laughs> I check into the hostel. I meet a lady, and she's like American. She's like I don't know what she's doing. She's working down there, whatever. Travelers. Some, sometimes travelers will 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 hole up and they'll work at a hostel for free room and board, okay, free meals, and then it's like now you're not going through your money and you get to stay in a town. By the way, this is already making me want to go back to South America. Maybe God Bolivia. Damn. We should go to Bolivia. I'm in. That's not a good idea. There's no coast, but there's mountains and it's fun. And don't there's Bolivia at the top, right? It's in the middle. It's down here. Or maybe there's a little bit of coast. I don't think we there don't is, need though. a coast. We get mountains. Yeah, mountains. I think it's really high. Why La Bolivia? Paz. Why are you saying Bolivia? I think when we were in Ecuador, I started looking around at shit, and then Argentina. She moved to, so I'm bitter about it. Brazil. Everyone goes to Brazil. Yeah. Bolivia. What do you think that's of where, this? That's where Sundance Kid, yeah. the Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid, went to hide. I think. Oh, I'm in. All right. I'm in. Great. We should make a plan. Okay, let's do it. It's Oh, and it's, it's Southern Hemisphere, so next winter maybe. That's this winter. Maybe the next winter. It's tough because there's like touring time. It's good touring in the winter, but you got to like take care of your life a little bit. And yes, like, of course. Nah, fuck that. I'll make a, that's, I'm taking a great time off. Yeah, well, you can go for five days too. It's funny. I just hung out in this class, and there's some like two, digit, two nomads, like six years gone, uh, two three backpackers one just finished four months another's like four months into like a two-year trip and they're like they view a two-week trip as like oh you're right the american vacation <laughs> you're like damn it <laughs> oh fuck that I'm like why why have a rich life yeah our lives are our great. lives are i want to cool. get back to my life yeah we're not going back to hr yes exactly we are going back to peru so okay. so we're in Peru. So then I get there. I know we're only on day one. We're like yeah. forty minutes into this goddamn podcast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I meet, I meet the American girl. I trade my money. They they give exchange You're, money. Okay. And then I go, great, thank you. I don't know. It's weird that they exchange money at the hostel, but maybe that's normal. But that is where I exchange money. So then I go out. I go to town. I buy. I forget what I needed to buy. A toothbrush and toothpaste. I forgot something like that. Anyways, so then I came back to the hostel. And oh, I no no! I went to the place to buy the thing. What thing? The the toothbrush and the toothpaste. Yeah. And they were like, "This is counterfeit money." <gasps> that you got at the hostel? Yes. So it was the scariest experience of my life. That and trying to get into Israel with fucking uh, Kuwait stamps. That's a whole other story. But <laughs> they were like, "What? What? What? What?" I was like, "This." I was like, uh, "USO Army." <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "Get him back." <laughs> So I went there, and they were like, this is counterfeit money. And they went and got another guy. And I'm like, I'm committing a felony what? five minutes into being in Peru. And they were like, yeah, this isn't real money. This is like they're showing it to me. And they're like, fuck, get, get it. this isn't work. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Did they I give just you the money here. back? They gave me the money back. Okay, because if they didn't give you the money back, I'd be like, that's a scam to steal your money. No, they gave me the money back, and I paid with American cash. I was like, can you pay American? And I think I gave them way too much there. Maybe that's another scam. I went back, though, to the hostel, and I said, hey, they told me this is fake money. And then the American girl that worked there was like, where did you get this? And I was like, from you. From you. I learned it from watching you, Dad. <laughs> I, I learned it from it. watching you. I got it from you like five minutes ago. And she's like, there's no way this came from us. And it was like I was being I fucked with. I have no other Peruvian money. I just got here. I said that. I was like, I got here 10 minutes ago. I got to this nation <laughs> 15 minutes ago, I came from the airport to here. You gave hey, me this Peru, money. you're not doing a great job at this point in my Peruvian career. To like, not loving it. Yeah. So she stunk. We got it taken care of. But like, basically, I committed a fucking felony immediately. What do you mean you got it taken care of? How? She, they, they figured, I don't know. They took, I, I didn't get in trouble and I got money. They were like, back. we'll get okay. to the bottom of this, whatever. So, but wow. I was, I almost went to wow. a Peruvian prison, like fucking, uh, you know what? Damn. Midnight Express. I think that was Turkey. But Take whatever. Word for it. Yeah. I've been there too. Um, 
so then I had to wait around for my uh, my boop to show up. I don't want to say her name. Yeah. But um, so then I got so anxious. I was so geared up that I was barfing. I fucking threw up because I was like, <laughs> oh my god, she's gonna come. And the anticipation, because you gotta ma- you gotta remember that I was like in love with this woman. I thought I was gonna marry her. I lived with you were her. her there at that it was hostel. like the love of my life, and I yeah. hadn't seen her in like ten months. So like the door opens, she jumps in my arms. Literally the happiest moment of my life because. There's not that many moments, like a moment. Yeah. There's like my, my wedding is not a moment. You're just it's a day the and it's the best weekend. day. Yeah. Multiple but days. She jumps in my arms, it's a big reunion, it's all exciting. I throw up again. I was so anxious. We hang out in Cusco for a day. Then we go meet Kike and uh, we rent all this hiking gear, tents, the boots, the whole thing. We go for the hike and right away it's just spectacular. It's nice. It's unbelievable because you're just wow. immediately. We had, well, we had to take a van to where we started. So you like didn't start in the hostel. We you get t- picked up in the hostel in a van in darkness. In darkness. Wow. Yes. Wow. We get picked up, and there, wow. I'm sure you've been to a lot of places like this. When you're in these countries, you're in a van. You have the van. You're paying for it. But if someone wants a ride, you just pick them up. Right. That's just what it is. So, that, it, by the way, there's got to be something, maybe an essay or something about cultural differences that you're like, hey, hey, what? But you're like. They're like, what, what? That guy needs a ride. <laughs> right. And we have four extra seats. What are you talking about? You ever see, um, uh, what's the one? Dumb and Dumber. No. Uh, the motorcycling riding through America. The e- Ewan McGregor? No, no. It's an old one about freedom. It's with the chick's dad. And oh, the, and the Easy guy Rider? Just, uh, Easy Rider. The single most overrated movie of all oh, time. I loved it. It stinks and but you know when, it. But when they're like, they're like, ah, it's weird, man. We got to get out of here. Go, Dude. We're eating their food, man. <laughs> right, like, right, like, right. Like, chill out with accusing them of shit. Right. They're actually being quite nice. Right. Yeah. That movie sucks, but uh, <laughs> there's no plot. It's ridiculous. <laughs> there's just nothingness. Uh, the idea is fun, whatever the soundtrack yeah. kicks ass. Soundtrack kicks ass. Uh, so go ahead. Um, so so you're picking up people. We get picked up, and then we're picking up people on the side of the road. You just move in, and at one point, there's like 11 people in there. You're just sitting like this. And it's one of those roads, too, like in the fucking movies, where it's like single lane, and they're just yeah. whipping around. Another <sighs> van comes, and you're just like, fuck, we're going to die. Yeah, yeah. But because you're in a foreign country, you're like, I guess this is just what it you is. Ju- it's fun to just go, hey, I'm not going to say anything, because I don't know the cultural shit. And even if I did, I, I don't think. And it's just so it's just like, you just almost like laugh. Yeah. It's like, what are you doing? You just go, okay, I guess I'm accepting it. And again... I'm in love. So I'm like, well, whatever, we'll die together. Can't That'll be, be fun. About it. People yeah. think we're good love. beginning story, good ending story. Hey, everybody. Today's episode of You Be Trippin' is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Guys, you're hiring for your job and you want to find the right person. You want to find them fast before they get hired up. Trust me, I used to work and I was a terrible employee. And you don't want to wait so long that all that's left is people like me. People who show up late for work, people who take their shirt off at work and say, oh, I can't, I can't, sun's out, guns out. And then they say, there's no sun. We're in an office. And I said, there's sun somewhere. Ha, <laughs> bro. And they said, what does that have to do with anything? They waited. They waited too long to find the right employee. And instead, they were saddled with a really terrible employee like me. You don't want that to happen to you in your business. You want to find the right employees. You want to find them fast. And that's where ZipRecruiter steps in. ZipRecruiter helps you avoid people like Ari Shafir, who will bring down your business. They help you find the right people, like Tom Segura, who runs a powerful, uh, successful podcast network. Not me, Ari Shafir, who needs charity from Tom. I'm going to destroy his network. ZipRecruiter will help people like Tom avoid hiring people like me. And right now, ZipRecruiter's powerful matching technology takes center stage to identify top talent for your roles. Immediately after you post your job, ZipRecruiter's smart technology starts showing you qualified people for it. Ah, What's better than that when you're hiring? You'll be the hero at your job. You'll be the hero. Everybody will be like, wow, how'd you find the great person? How'd you find the perfect person? Look at our competitor. They hired Ari Shafir. They're crumbling. Their businesses are literally collapsing. I mean, structurally. Structurally, the walls are collapsing in the businesses that hired Ari Shafir. Because I had one job where I was taking copper wire out of the walls because I knew I could sell it. And they didn't do a background check. None of my references checked out. ZipRecruiter will help you avoid that. They'll help you find the right people. Amp up your hiring process with ZipRecruiter and find the best fast. See why four to five employees who post on ZipRecruiter Zip Recruiter, get a quality of candidates within the first day. What? First day? That's 
pretty solid. Damn. Anyway, just go to this exclusive web address right now Try to try ZipRecruiter for free. It's ZipRecruiter.com slash trippin. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash trippin. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Do you want your pubes to be like a loaf of bread left out in a post-apocalyptic future? You ever watch Walking Dead? And as you're walking, they're like, they're like, hey, there's a supermarket we passed by on the road. We should go in there and see if there's any cans of food left over. And you go, sure, there might be, but there might be zombies. And you're like, it's worth it. It's worth it if it's a can of some food. But there's also maybe, mm, I don't know, some bread. And some dumb fucking idiot, some new person of your tribe that you know is going to get killed because they're just a guest star. They go, what about this loaf of bread? And then even Carl knows. Even Carl knows. Idiot. It's got fucking mold on it. You dumb fucking idiot. It's full of disgusting mold. Overgrown. Is that what you want your pubes to look like? Overgrown, post-apocalyptic mold? No, I don't think you do. I think you want clean, smooth. Smooth like this back wall I'm sitting in front of. Yeah, Manscaped can get you there. The fifth generation trimmer features two interchangeable next-gen skin-safe blade heads. A standard one for taking a little off the top and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. And my heart desires smoothness right over my D and B's. Yeah, you know what that means, dick and balls. It's not something you think about much in Walking Dead. They don't really talk about their shaved pubes. In fact, the more that I think about it right now as I'm doing this ad read, I realize every chick in that show should have like pretty bad underarm hair, but they don't. And why not? Because that show's not reality. That show's not reality. But you know what is reality? You meeting some chick who's like, hey, you want it? You want it? You want it? You want it? Everyone's like, no, you're disgusting. But you're, you don't have any standards. And you go, yeah, I'll go home with you. And maybe it's the first girl you've hooked up with in months. So even though she's just some pass around, you go, I do want to impress you. And you don't want to pull out a fucking loaf of moldy bread. No, you want to take something smooth. Smooth like a fucking new snow in the Rockies. Yeah, Manscaped can get you there. So that's my pitch. That's my pitch for you to get Manscaped. And right now, I've got another pitch for you. You can get 20% off and free shipping with the code TRIPPIN at manscaped.com. Yeah, that's 20% off and free shipping with the code TRIPPIN at manscaped.com. Nothing like smooth pubes in your pants. Now, let's get back to the episode. So we get to um, wherever. They drop us off literally on the side of the road. They're like, this is where the hike starts. Wow. I have a great photo of the sun coming up. on the. It's framed at my house. It's beautiful. Can you send me that? Sure, yeah. yeah. I'll send you a bunch of photos. Oh, yeah, for sure. So um, I sh- I, we the get sun's there. sun's coming up right there. Sun, sun rising. I, I, I step back to get the van in there with the sun rising on the road. And you start hiking. The sun comes up. And it's just like rolling hills farmland and it's one of these trails where like he has to lift the barbed wire you got to crawl underneath it to like access to the start trail. yes wow and you're just like like right away i'm like this is fucking magical and there's you know llamas everywhere and goats and cow and you're, it's the kind of trail where you're walking through people's homes like these stone villages and shit. So you go in and out of towns? It's not just mountains. It's it's through towns. Yes. Well, that's the thing about the trail. It's like you go through different, um, what's that called? Weather systems. Uh, what's that word? Uh, topographical climates. climates. Yeah. So like there's like fields, oh. like just grass, mountains. It's like 90 degrees at times. Then you need a winter hat at times. I'll send you a bunch of photos. The photos are like unbelievable. Yeah, send me everything. We'll put them up. Because at one point you're walking through like snowy mountain caps and everything so whatever night it's like night two we're having a great time and you get there your tent is set up and we're sharing a tent by the way we're not together we're broken up but we're in like a lover's tent it's like a two-person tent um and we're just having these great conversations did you pack did you pack condoms no okay but i don't i didn't want to push it so i'm like i gotta be cool i gotta go easy because she said we're not getting back together. Yes. Yeah, so it's she, her move to flirt. Exactly. She's like, no drama. And I'm like, you got it. You got it, babe. Um, so I'm like, okay, I got to be cool. We're hiking. 
Day two, we're outside at the foothills of the mountain, like in between. And the, this this is a camp where there's some other people. There's like a little village where people were are living. Were you passing a lot of people when you're hiking? Very few. There was actually two Israelis that were hiking around the same time. We kept catching them and passing them. And That's then fun, pass right? Because they start cool, to like yeah. know each other, start Ke- waving. Kike did say Israelis never tip. He's like, they're no non-tippers. And it's funny when you go to foreign countries because they don't have this thing of racism. They're uh-huh. just like this. Oh, those are the guys it's that absurd. don't tip. That's why I love uh, waitresses when they're like, yo, Jews and blacks are the worst. And they're like, what? Like, no, <laughs> Their dad didn't didn't teach them that. They they were fine. They learned it on the job. We were in the Galapagos and we're like, uh, who, who do you not like? We're like, I don't know, but these Israelis people came and they're just like, we use the kitchen. We use the kitchen. We, we warm up our food. And we, we and like, no, no, this is the kitchen for us preparing food for guests. And they're like, no, no, we use it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, dude, that's Israelis. <laughs> that's Jews. Yeah, he was just like, yeah, they, they suck. But they were on their own thing. So we yeah. saw them like throughout the week and a half. But we saw almost nobody other than those two guys. Other than we would bump into like village people. The, you know that band, the village people? <laughs> uh, no, people that lived in the village. At one point we passed a kid up in the tree and he was going, gringo, gringo, gringo. Oh, I love that. That was fun. And I then they sold that. us some, uh, whatever the fruit was. It was really delicious. I got a good photo Apples. of that too. No, no, it was some exotic thing. It was like pussy, but different. What was it? I don't know. I'll send you the photo. Did you eat it? Crazy what, looking. What, what, what was it? Yeah, you, I think you cracked it open and sucked the juice out and ate it. Oh, is it a maracuja? No, 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 right. no, no, no. That's a that's a you passion could say fruit. anything. It's a. Um, it was like a passion fruit. Grenadina, grenadina. Maybe I'll pull up the photos. Do you crack after. it like this, like crack it open, and then like, yeah, pull uh, up the photos. I want to know what it is. Twelve years ago. So, we're hiking night two. We're in the foothills of these mountains, like mountains on every side. You go out there, and it's not even worth trying to describe. If I was a poet, I would. It would be better. The stars are the most insane thing you can fucking imagine. Unbelievable. And I go to Maine so every year. Yeah, yeah, I've always go to Maine. We go to Maine. We call it Star Road. There's this dead end road. We lay in the street, and you'll see like six shooting stars a night. But this made that look like a fucking joke. Because we're like we went miles to Zion, from anything. And it still probably was not as good as that. But I told Mike Vecchione, who I just picture like never oh, yeah. having left the city. And we were like taking stuff in. And he's so military. Like, we got to take everything in. Put everything away. I was like, Mike, come on. He's like, I thought we got everything, but let's go get it. And he was like, what? I'm like, this. And he was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, he was like blown away. And my, my stupid mind, I was like, this isn't even that great. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's like, just more than three stars. I'm like, we're four miles from Vegas. <laughs> I can see the lights of Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> but the stars were insane. But at this point... My friend gets horribly sick. Who's, I don't who's know. Your friend? Your the lady, girl. my okay. ex. Yeah. She gets horribly sick. I don't know if it no. was the water or food, whatever. I mean, like, thought she was going to die. Like, that thing where you're like, can we get a helicopter in here? Like, barfing, puking. Uh, that's the same thing. Shitting out, like, blah, like demon possessed shit. And which kind of was fun for me because I was like, I'm back in because I'm rubbing her back and yeah. I'm fucking touching her side of her mouth with my asshole. Jerking I'm just up there, yeah, yeah, jerking yeah. off. And so we're sharing a tent. So at one point, Kike comes out and he's like, he gives her like Tylenol, and I'm like, I think we're gonna need something serious. <laughs> just pouring out fluids sh- every. You should have given her what I gave you. Illegal oh yeah. Descriptions. Uh, Ecuadorian poop pill. No. <laughs> what, what? Oh, that was a different place. Z-Pack. Bulgaria. Yeah. Bulgarian poop pills. I call them because I had I got sick. I get sick whenever I travel. It's called Traveler's Not Diarrhea. Not this time. She did. She got so, crazy sick. This is day what? Day two. This is night two. Night two. Of, of the hike. Seven. Yes. And okay. I think we're hiking like between six and ten miles a day. Wow. wow really? How yeah, many hours long. a day? Hour, like all day. What You'd hike talking? for like, I don't know, like 7 a.m., eat lunch at uh, maybe like 11 a.m. and then hike to like 4 p.m. Whoa. It was like a day's That's work. That's very long. It was very, very long. And um, it was awesome. I think it, I, I used to know all these numbers. I think it was like a 38 mile trail, or it might have been more than that. 50 miles. I, I don't know. I'd have to re look it up. It's, I mean, this is 12 years ago. Okay. Um, so she's getting sick. At one point, we're in the tent together, and it's intense. And. She's like leaning out. Literally, the tent. even saw you. Like, what's the joke there? I can see. You, I can see with your face. You made a joke, but it couldn't possibly be intense. That that corny, but yeah, We're intense. Yeah, I like the. I drew kike on your forehead. Let's not forget that. Let's live in the good times. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah. Um. At one point, so she. Le- I remember the underwear she's wearing: black and white, horizontal striped underwear, 
Like she macaw. leans out like hands and knees is barfing out the thing. And I'm just, I've just woke up. So I'm like kind of rubbing her ass is right here. And I just see <laughs> like, it looked like someone shot a paintball gun out of her asshole into her panties. Just like, <laughs> I just lost it. <laughs> And I found, and I'm trying to get back in there, so I can't be like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "This, that's okay." And she's like, "I'm sorry." She's like crying. She's like, "I'm sorry. This is horrible." And I'm like, "It's fine. Whatever." And so I just watched like like a Gallagher show, shit in the underwear, <laughs> hot, sexy pair of underwear too, and um, <laughs> had to take those on. And then it, it was just like diarrhea farts all night. We just wow. slept in the tent with the worst and a pile of puke right outside the tent. Because after a while, you can't even go to the bathroom anymore. She's so weak. Uh, it was bad. And then the next morning, the puking and shitting had subsided, but she was like, she good. had lost so many fluids, and we were elevated. Nick and, Mullen used to do a joke. Do you ever know about a diarrhea joke? Which was he that? Goes, diarrhea is only recently a comical disease. <laughs> he goes, 100 years ago, people died from diarrhea. That's and so people were like, John's got diarrhea. He started laughing. He's like, it's not funny, dude. He's got diarrhea. <laughs> That's Vaterot? That's uh, Mullen. Oh, Nick Mullen. Yeah. Um, but a lot of funny Nicks. DePaulo, Vaterot, mm. Mullen, Nick. Turner. Nick. So we get up the next day. So the day yeah, three. How are you going to hike day three? So day three happens to be the most challenging hike. Oh, this is boy. the day we're summiting. It's the most hardcore hike, but she's like dying. So Kike is like, you're going to have to take a horse. And so it's like heartbreak because you want to do this hike and she's got to ride a horse because she's like fucking like <laughs> Like diet. strapped like, a shot, a shot like cowboy to it. I mean, I literally have photos like that. I mean, she looked like, it's like the end of, uh, what was the Coen Brothers remake? Uh, True Grit. Yeah. Like she had, oh, to, right, right. she had to ride the horse and, and it was a serious hike, like the most serious hike I've done because you're, you're, you got altitude and it was like straight up and it's where I really learned how to do a challenging hike. Where you're like, you just put one foot literally in front of the other, like heel to toe walking. It's like that Why? kind of hiking. Why? So you don't extenuate. Like, uh, too, it's, too, it's not too, you don't exhaust yourself. So you don't like take two steps at once. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Little... It's wow. like, because it's so high. Did they teach you so that or long. is that just like you come That's what he kept saying, yeah. And he's like, we'll just be patient with it. It's a long day. It's a very challenging hike. Wow. Um, so we were literally walking like that because it was like straight up. And Where were you sleeping? I mean, just in tents. They set up tents in a, in a tent area. For yes, so that's why so we slept at the base the night before, and we had to summit and then get back down. Because you other ain't side. sleeping up there; it's right. gonna be too cold. Okay, exactly. What month of the year is this? This is September. So early September. They're, they're late spring. I guess I don't even know. Yeah. Okay. So we get up there, and it's it's so hard, but it's heartbreaking because I'm looking back and I'm doing this hike, and I'm like, it was extremely challenging. And she just looks like heartbroken because she doesn't get to do it. She's on uh -huh. the horse. And then at one point I said, it makes my heart hurt to Kike. And Kike goes, your heart hurts? <laughs> like he was like, thought I was going to like, somebody's probably died on him at some point. He was like, oh, fuck. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I meant like, um, I'm sad. Um, so then literally as we summit, and I think I have this video on Facebook, we summit the mountain and you just hear. Diarrhea. And he's like. <laughs> 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 clip it so we get up there and we look over and there's a fucking avalanche on the no. next mountain unbelievable a rock avalanche like a no snow like a snowy oh, it's like, snowy it's yes a snow oh this is a snowy mountain this is like winter hats fucking wow. bundled and uh, i got thermal under i got like the 90s early 90s pearl jam look i got thermals boots and i love that shorts. thermals underneath the fucking t-shirt yeah it was hot that's another thing mullen said uh, uh soda was wearing a t-shirt over thermals and he's like i just like a child and nick was like no you don't he goes like just like a 24 year old and nick's like you just like a 24 year old when you were 24 <laughs> right <laughs> nobody right. just 24 year olds don't dress like that anymore it's funny <laughs> anyway funny guy yeah so uh we get up there we see the avalanche and it's fucking like spectacular i think i got a video of it i'm pretty sure it's a video you saw avalanche not like a crazy one, but yeah, like a fucking... Wow. Uh, that was a thrill. It was a beautiful moment to summit. The photos are insane. And it's got like that old school like wood sign, like fucking Wiley e. Coyote. Um, that was a thrill. Gorgeous. Um, Did you think about giving up at all during these? Where you're like, I can't, I can't, it's too long. I gotta, I gotta stop. I didn't, like, you think, you think like... We had a good guide and you kept saying like, okay, we'll just get there. I mean, it's like the... 
the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. It's like that old thing. If you look to the top of the mountain metaphor, you're like, yeah. I can't no go way. up there. Uh -huh. But if you look down, you're like, I can put my heel in front of my toe. Yeah. And so it was a long, it was a long, long day. And like you never had the ability to go like, oh, like, so w I did this in Austria um, or or Myanmar, but I, we were like, we, we knew we were staying in a, like a village or a monastery or a hiker hut. And so at some point, it's hiking forever. You get to be like, and it's miles ahead, but you get to be like, or a mile ahead. You're like, there it is. Right, and right. Like, we still got another hour and a half, but at least you're like, sweet. Right. The end literally is in sight. You didn't have that. It's just no. a tent area. No, no. Yeah, you just wow, kept that's going tough. and that's going tough. and going. I mean, it was like, it was really long. But then, so then we got through that, and then the rest of the hiking was moderate, but some of the coolest shit, because it's just all day. And that's, it's so... um beautiful and um you know zen because there's literally nothing to do yeah. except walk and you're walking with a purpose it's not a loop it's not like we're going to go do this trail we're walking to, to a destination somewhere. yeah wow. which was really incredible did she start hiking again day four yeah she started hiking again and she was very heartbroken she didn't get to hike but it's also a unique it was just one day like, she missed yeah so it's like whatever you're back it was the day though that we summited a mountain on foot Damn. Um, but Damn. she got to ride a horse up the fucking thing. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, or a donkey, whatever the hell it was. I think it was a horse. Um, so then it was just beautiful hiking like through towns. The coolest photo I have yeah. is of, so you we're hiking around, it's like the deep valley and then there's like this other ridge and you hike, it's hard to explain without the photo. Well, we could probably plug it in, but. No, she'll plug it in. So there's like this long ridge, but it's almost like a, a U shape. It goes like this, like the way the land goes, you're walking and then you take like a left and walk way in and around and keep going. But there's a house on either side. So basically you got to see the photo, but there's two houses that are like 200, 300 feet from each other. Yeah. But like a two and a half hour walk from uh, each other. Right. Because they're Cause across a the valley. Wow. So you walk like past this house. But and they're closer. Like, like, hey, fuck you. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and then like two hours later, you walk past this house and they could fucking throw Frisbees to each other. I mean, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. But so that was incredible. And then every once in a while, now forever, a red can of Pringles to me is synonymous with Peru. No. Why? Because you'd come up to these huts these little huts that are just on the trail, and they live in a little village. I don't know how they, I don't know the um, They know details. hikers are coming by, so they're yes. like, let's have some snacks while we make some cash. So they got a little hut, and one of the things they would have is Pringle. And it the been little like, mini can? Yes. It might have been like Snickers or some shit. Um, didn't you tell me about, go ahead, you're going to keep talking, I guess, but didn't you tell me about like you eat a, like a, an energy? Oh, yeah, there was some kind of like, yeah. Candy. It was like a leaf. It was like kind of a, uh, well, he always had candy that's yeah that's what i was talking about what's this leaf what, well, he he always like, have candy. i thought it was like, I thought it was like kinda, a twizzle like this will yeah, get yeah. you going some kind of candy yeah that was a big thing for him to give you a little sugar boost so i still hike with starburst now starburst that's yeah. what it was but he had some kind of peruvian shit uh, but there was like a leaf that he's like this gives you energy and i remember being like is this like coke and this, i was still drinking so i was yeah. kind of like yeah sweet and he's yeah. like you can rub it on your gums or eat it so we were eating it but i don't remember feeling high i think it was supposed to be like an energy yeah thing then oh i forgot about this this is funny we came across a species of butterfly that's literally called the world's largest butterfly and i took about 15 photos but wasn't wise enough to put something in scale the fucking butterfly is yeah. this big and, and it's like, like uh, this is the largest butterfly in the world and i was like holy shit and i'm just grabbing photos you gotta put a lighter in but there. in the photo it just looks like you gotta a put butterfly. a lighter in there yeah yeah or like, a big jew nose or something and people are like oh wow cool and i'm like no you don't get it <laughs> i mean it was like fucking six inches big i mean maybe four inches whatever yeah um so that was super cool um those are kind of like the the highlighty things and then we get so, okay yeah so, but then you got you're getting there at some point. We're getting and we're there. We're on beach yes. of the punch if there's other stuff. So then after de and then oh at one point you're we hiking to one of the most unique, interesting spots in the world. Yes. So then at you have a goal. That's pretty cool. You're not just like going. Super cool. And at one point we had to take a train. I remember it was a bright yellow train, like an old train. Like th this part of the trail, you get on a train and take that. Yeah. Kind of to town, 
that was like the last part and that was really romantic and cool and just like you're just waiting for the train you're on the tracks and you get on this beautiful train photos of that also we take the train then we get into town which i think is just called machu picchu i think the town was built around this tourist site basically but it's a cute cool little town we get there and we have a beer which was amazing one of the best beers i've ever had dude it's the carbs and, and like it's the same thing with austria you get there you get a beer you've earned it and, and it's ice cold and it's just oh. carb up it's like when you're skiing beers are good too but it's like it, they're so fucking perfect it was amazing was less, it a peruvian beer what was it? yeah yeah it was a peruvian beer and it was just beautiful and i got great photos of us we look so happy and i just happened to be wearing a boston shirt she's wearing a denver shirt yeah we're from there and you have this peruvian beer yeah we have a great peruvian beer and you've made it at this point and the other thing was the Wait, mosquitoes at, to the city at, uh, we made it to the city and like it's like next morning we take the bus up to machu picchu oh to you the don't base. hike over to it no you hike to the town and yeah. then now it's like everyone else that takes the other trail is there now there's like thousands of people in wow. town okay or hundreds whatever and so that night we drank. The mosquito bites are worse than Ecuador. I remember I counted 38 from, from arm to elbow. Wow. I got those photos too. They're it's sick. So I, I'm like, just, we're just fucking covered in mosquitoes. This night we have like a dinner. Now we're at a restaurant. And you know that relief you have when you're now you're back into civilization? Yeah. That was all amazing. But you're like, fuck yes. A restaurant, a bathroom, a shower, a hotel. Well, it was a hostel, but still. Right, right, right. It's that, it's that finally, like, the little things where you're like, oh, or like a, just a warm shower. It's like, nice. Yes, or a Pepsi. You're like, right, a Pepsi. Right, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> this fucking rules. And, oh, a waitress. Like, somebody coming over and, and serving you. Also, the, the, they claim to be the highest elevated Irish bar in the world is in that town. Interesting. Um, so then this night, though, so now we're back. In civilization, it's eighth, the eighth day. Oh, I forgot. We also stayed at this fucking spectacular, like, home, hotel, house thing, fucking romantic, crazy, on a coffee field. The only cup of coffee what? I ever had. It was, like, in this Peruvian coffee field. Wait, wait, like, on the hike? On the hike. One of the days. We you, mostly camped, but this day we, like, hiked to this place. Yeah. That was, like, a fucking, like, honeymoon destination. Just spectacular. Wow. And uh, I forgot about that. And on this, it was in a coffee field. We drink the coffee, and I'm like, this is the worst thing I've ever tasted in my life. <laughs> I've literally had one cup of coffee in my life, and it was in, the guy was like, people fly all over the world to taste this coffee. And like, he's holding the beans. They're like on the branch. Yeah. He's like, this is this coffee. And I was like, it's just dog shit. Nah. Get the fuck out of <laughs> like, here. No, our whole like, economy's based on this. Like, bad economy. I was like, this is the worst drink I've ever had in my life. What? So, that I forgot about that. So then... Fast forward back to our destination. We get to the town, and it's this night that I decide we oh, should get back I together. Forgot about Why this. don't we get back together? And oh. she's like, "No, we're not doing this." And I'm like, "Wow, I mean, who? Can we're having a great time." And I still stand by it. I'm like, "We're having the fucking funnest time of our lives." We had the funnest time of our lives in New York. Like, why not? Why not, dude? We only broke up so you can live your adventure. But I think it's because I'm ugly. Yeah, there is that. It's like the extra <laughs> detail they don't really ever like tell you. No, no, they don't want to tell you. Yeah, I was gonna say but a, a second ago. I was like, you might be listening to this, people at home, or you might be watching it. I was gonna say if you're if you're listening, go to the YouTube to see the pictures, or maybe we'll have a maybe we'll have a Patreon or something you can go to. But like, but like, uh, or a website or something. I don't know. But I, I I was thinking like you might be feeling like you're missing out if you're listening. But now Joe is ugly. Right. It's probably a better listen on this one. That's the thing. And what's wild is you're somehow uglier than me. It's, it's so That's interesting. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so I'm like, why don't we get back together, bro? It's like, a listen. Yeah. And it's like you have, <laughs> it's kind of like, my analogy would be like, you know when you stand in line at customs and it's fucking crazy long. It's the worst and you're way to like, get back into America. You're like, it doesn't matter. We're here. I'm not going to miss my flight. I'm here plenty early. And you have this attitude for like 50 minutes and then you go, I'm out of bandwidth. Fucking motherfuck this country. <laughs> That's what it was like with this, where I was like, I went eight days with just being cool. It's like, it's going to be fine. And I've reached a moment where I'm like, how are we not back together? We at least make out once. Exactly. And she's like, no, that'll complicate stuff. 
One little complicated, I'll never see you again. And then I was like, well, I'm like, you probably had, did you meet someone? And she's like, I met a couple people. <sighs> I've had, and then you're like, then now I'm in there. Now I've like ripped the scar. So then I'm just like heartbroken and sad. So the day we go to Machu Picchu, I ruined it. Oh, it's like the biggest yeah. regret of my life. Oh, yeah. I fucked up because I was Should've like, what? After Machu Picchu. I was like, you had Because sex in your head, who? you're like, it's going to make Machu Picchu the best thing ever. Right. But the reality is, Machu Picchu's already going to be pretty cool. Well, the, so that. I had this story in my head. We have the great meeting story. And I was like, we got back together at Machu Picchu. We'll kiss on the mountaintop. We're kissing the mountaintop, banging behind a fucking uh, a tribe that's been wiped out. But instead, I was like, fuck. And then I couldn't get over it. And I was like, well, who is the guy? Are you romantically involved? What are you going to do you with want, your I life? Want Why are we going to be that, together? It's that dumb thing where the, where the guy's heartbroken. Men are not, we, we're not emotional. So when we have to deal with emotion, we have no practice at it. I know, and I'm 28 years old. You know, in 28, you think you have wisdom, but you're a fucking moron. Idiot. Not even 28, I don't think. 2010. Yeah, I guess I was 28. Yeah. So you're just a fucking idiot. And so the Machu Picchu, I got to show you these photos too. I'm just looking sad in all of them. <laughs> I'm just like sitting there, and they're like giving us the lesson of all this stuff. And it's insane. It's, it's a fucking surviving city. Wait, people are there? No, no, but like the oh, mountains right, right, and the right. thing, and like this is where they cook, this is this. Yeah, I want to see some pictures of Machu Picchu itself, too, with you there. You got to have somebody some with you in them. It's insane. And then there's this other mountain, and this llama's walking around. Oh. Then there's this other mountain that you can also hike. They're like, it's extra, and it's like way higher, and you hike up there, and it's fucking crazy. I have an amazing photo of my feet dangling off. Like, I'm just sitting on the edge, which is something I wouldn't do now. I, I was thinking about jumping off it, but my <laughs> your feet are just dangling, and it's like 800 feet straight down. And it's another photo wow. that doesn't have perspective. Scale. You're like, this every, is every, insane. The moon is really big. When we take a picture, it's like, idiot, it's not going to do it. The moon is the least photographical thing, <laughs> unless you have a whatever. But yeah, so my feet are like dangling, and it's like a mile straight down or whatever the fuck. Um, it's the most incredible place I've ever been, and I fucking spoiled the mood for oh. myself and her, and it's uh, probably the biggest regret of my life. <sighs> So you take you don't so I always picture Machu Picchu was like you you come over this mountain or this hill and then there it is in front of you. It's not. They just drop you off. Yeah, you kind of drive up there and then there's a uh, little bit of hike to get up there, but you can see it. I should have fucking got the photos and just scroll through them while we were doing this. Yeah, for sure. But it's a whole bunch of work. Okay. I gotta go to Facebook and then find the album. And... Well, you're gonna have to get them. Yeah, I'll send them. Well, Simple. it's not. It's it's just too much work to do while we're right, right, right. shooting a podcast. Yeah, you would have had to do this. Like, uh, oh, here's this. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but it is like, it is unbelievable, and I I feel like again I regret it because I don't have the proper like you can't believe because I was so fucking in my head about like well, that you're I missing even have come out here. She's on... using me to just keep her company here. Right. I fucked up. She fucked this guy. I need to go jerk off, and. Uh, I was saving loads for you. But um, you know how hot that was when you were <laughs> harfing and shitting? I wanted it so well, bad. Well, that's the feeling I had. I was like, what? How could you do it? Because you have that mindset. You're like, how could you do this to me? Oh, right. But yeah, she's like, we broke up. We broke, I told, and like, I told you very clearly. And yeah. I, yeah. I've, she's, and by the way, when we first started dating, she was like, this isn't long term. I'm not going to live in New York. And right. I was like, ah. <laughs> oh, and then her friend, I forgot to say this. Her friend, her best friend at the time was like a close friend of mine because we had been dating. And we had hung out like two weeks earlier in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, you're not getting back together. And oh. I said, this is a quote. I go, I said this to her. I go, never underestimate the power of laughter. <laughs> what a dork. <laughs> Joe's quote. Because I really, I'm like literally, my ex is telling me this. Her best friend in the world is like, Joe. She's like, I no, care I've about you. To her. And by the way, looking back, I'm like, I think I could have fucked the friend. The friend. Because she came what? from Chicago. I, I went and visited her in Chicago, stayed with her in Chicago. Yeah. We drove from Chicago to Appleton. They came on a road trip to see wow, me do that's comedy. Far. Yeah. And then she had she didn't have a boyfriend. But we sat in the car while everyone else was inside, like having a heart to a drunk heart to heart about the trip. And she's like, you're not going to get back to you. And she's like, look at me. I don't want you to be hurt. You're not getting back together. And I was like, you don't understand. Like, I'm, you don't know me. I make her laugh so much. And that's true. I do. The whole time in Peru, she was you, dying right. laughing. But 25-year-old like, like, women. You've forgotten, the, you've forgotten the feeling of me making you laugh all the time. When you remember that, you will be back. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, here's yeah. the thing. I've yeah. now proven 
that I will go anywhere for her as a friend. So she can fuck whoever, right. and then yeah. I can fly in and be like, bah, bah, da, 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 da. and she's like, yeah, you do make me laugh. Hey, 10 guys who just fucking trained me. Right. <laughs> well, let this guy make us laugh. So I really thought, but I do think, A, life caught up to my thinking. Like now, when you're in your 40s, a woman is like, I'll be with this guy. He makes me laugh. But when they're in their, tw- I, I do this joke on stage as a bit but like in your 20s they're like that's not enough for me yeah but anyways and i was probably also overbearing and annoying in so many ways but um anyways machu picchu was incredible how long did you I stay at machu picchu it. i think it uh, like four hours probably four hours, three, just walking four hours. around it's, yeah it's just ruins and like yeah it was super cool but there's tons of people around and it wasn't as like i was like i miss when we, it was just us on the trail <sighs> that was how i felt on with when we went to zion Right, that place we got, just the the the, the spot we had, exactly. the hike there was not nearly as spectacular as the other one, but it was only us and that guy and his dogs, right, right, a little bit, and it was like, I could see both. Yeah, were there was there like a busload of Chinese tourists coming out, taking pictures? Yeah, like, there was a bunch yeah. of that, but again, I was like so fucking in my head, damn, that um, you know, I was all I was all fucked up. It, it's a real regret. How, it was stupid. But, how did you get home? Okay, so then this is fun. So then. Oh, I had brought Xanax. At this time, I had panic disorder, so what, I'd have panic wait, attacks. Oh, by the way, where did you shit while you were while you were hiking and camping? We would come up to these little huts, would have little bathroom things. Okay. A couple of times, I think we shat outside or pissed outside, but mostly you'd get to a place. Um, but so then I had Xanax because at the time I had panic attacks bad, and I was like, "What if I have a panic attack on this trip?" I ended up not because I was so fucking in the moment, except for Machu Picchu. Um, but I had them the whole time. And so we went back to, we ended up taking a, bu- a bus back to Lima, which is the capital, different Lima, city. Peru, yeah. Lima, Peru. Bus back from Machu From Picchu. Machu Picchu, yeah. Or no, a train, actually. We took a train. Oh, that's I remember, great. I remember going to jerk off on the bathroom. <laughs> on, on the, the train, train bathroom? Yeah. So then um, we took a train back. And then it, we actually had a sweet moment. That I think we actually held hands on that. Because it was like, I had gotten over the fact, like, we're not getting back together, whatever. But we were so close and... We'd been through a lot together. So it was like, it was sweet. And then um, we got to the airport. Her flight left before mine because she was going back to Argentina. And so we said goodbye at the airport. And it was like, okay, great. And I went to my iPod. I'm like listening to music. I'm like, it's okay. This is all worth it. My flight's leaving in two hours. I'm like, I'm taking a Xanax. So I take a Xanax. I have a beer. Flight gets canceled. Oh. Uh. So now I'm in Peru and I'm like I gotta figure out fucked up how that's to a, stay that's a somewhere. Bad combo. And I'm I'm emotional and I'm whacked out because I'm on a Xanax with beer. <laughs> and now I'm like, what? I gotta st- I gotta find a hotel and the airport airline is gonna supply us with a hotel. But I'm like I'm trying to like pay attention and be and like, Spanish. where is this? They're speaking, yep. There's a language barrier. I'm fucking on drugs and drunk now, and I'm heartbroken. Somehow I figure out how to get. And there's no like cell phone at that time. I didn't. I didn't have the ability to, like text. Oh, it was 2010. Right. Like I didn't so have a much smartphone. more fun to have to just figure it out. Yeah, had to figure it. I think no, because I was writing my mother emails. I got, I still got all the emails. That was crazy. the first year of an iPhone, but because we'd go to. E- I didn't have an iPhone till like 2013, 14. Yeah. Um. So I was like sending emails at an internet cafe. Then I remember oh, yeah. I went to the hotel. Somehow I found the hotel. It must have been the next morning. I was like, I got to call my mother. And I called my mother on the hotel phone, whatever that caused, whatever. And she didn't answer. And I fuck, I got so mad. And I just took the whole phone. And I was so heartbroken and pissed. And I just whipped the I remember like, throwing the phone across the room. Just being like, I got nobody and nothing. <laughs> and I still give my mother shit. I'm like, your son is in a foreign country. What do you mean? She wasn't there. You get a phone call. And you're like, eh, <laughs> oh, it's like she saw it and was like oh, I don't know if she saw it or what but I'm like oh, right. how are you not phone. keeping an eye out for the phone um, but anyway like Dustin called me Tom Dustin yeah but I didn't have his number but I'm like I just finished talking to you about Tom Dustin and yes. then 20 minutes later I get a call from Massachusetts number I was like Tom he's like yeah. yeah you can do the math mom of course she didn't do the math she left me hanging she stinks no she's great I love her of course um, and you're like one day I'll write a movie I'm going to make a movie. I'm going to get back at you for this. Um, it's available now, 4th of July movie.com or Louis 4th of July movie.com or, 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 or uh, Louis C.K.com. And uh, so you got to go back. 
So yeah, it was a beautiful. But the problem with going back is, I, I'd go with my wife and be like, "Oh, this is where we did this." Right. You, yeah. you know what I mean? There is that recreating stuff is not the same as experiencing it for the first time. Right. You, you're, no, you're trying to like in that walk in your own shoes. That's why I generally for this podcast bleep out specific names of restaurants places unless they're super famous like the eiffel tower or machu picchu right i'm like nah nobody has to know but like make your own trail right right um but yeah that is a problem going back to a place to try to recreate it it's like we did that let's do that again yeah no it's like you gotta find there's other stuff that's like that and and uh, someday we'll talk about my whale strip which was just incredible that that's the only trip i've had that actually i'm like that actually was probably better than Peru. That's where you went with, with Sarah. I went with Sarah and hikes, and I was also just in a better mental place. I but. feel like with you and Sarah, at least for the Ecuador one, I, I might have to I might have to do two guests for, for certain yeah, parts. Yeah. When you get two comedians or two people that share that trip, you go like, yeah. Or, or maybe uh, we'll get you and Vitor, and who else? Louis Cat Who else went to Turkey with you? No, that was Louis Katz. Louis Katz. Me, Nate, and Louis. Yeah, that wow. one. It's like maybe get both of you guys for that or something. Which I learned a lot about because Louis had traveled a lot. That was still, or maybe that was the, I can't remember if I Louis went to Peru first, but, but Louis, he knows how to travel and he cares about traveling. And he, I learned a lot from him. <sighs> Damn, that makes me really want to go to this place. I know. It just makes this me want to go. Like, you talk about it, you're like, fuck, fuck. let's get out of here. Cause domestic- let's get out of here, right? As soon as you hear about this shit, you're like, let's get out of here let's fucking throw all this shit away get well, out of here what i always say about foreign travel because i love domestic travel too i went to montana it was it ruled and, and maine and whatever but the thing that's great about foreign travel is okay. every single thing when you're in a foreign country is exciting and different mm-hmm. you're like look at this street sign look at this sign it's like when you're in the new york you see people taking photos different. of stuff you're like uh-huh. whoa oh right the cabs are be... different that yes. is, i read a thing it was like he, as soon as he got off the, the plane in somewhere, he said the sign of where to go was like a different font. Yes, exactly. And you're like, what? You're right, you... I think about this too. I think we've talked about this. When you're in a foreign country, you're like in the car looking at the everything, and you're uh-huh. like, I should have this mindset. Like when I drive in the Merritt Parkway from Boston to, uh, from New York to Boston, I should be looking at those trees like, look at the fucking tr- It's so full. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Like if you flew here from fucking... Uh, Argentina, you'd be like, look how thick Central Park is with trees. And we take it for granted. Yes. I had a tour guide in uh, Costa Rica, and we're like, do you ever get sick of monkeys? And he goes, yeah, for sure. He goes, I really want to see a deer, though. I've never seen a deer. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, I fucking spit at deers. (laughs) Deer. Um, I think that's the trip. It was an amazing trip. Highly recommend it. And, um, and, and, And also, the number one lesson I had is believe what people are telling you. What do you mean? When they're like, we're not getting back together. Oh, right. I was you're just like, like, my yeah. stomach is upset. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, ah, you're just fine. Be like, no, oh, no. But um, it was worth it. And and for a long time, it was hard. Because, but we finally had a chance, like a couple of years ago. And I haven't talked to her in a few years. But I saw her. Oh, it was that trip that we did the storytelling show in Denver? Denver. Well, I yeah, was going to say, her. was that the girl I met? Yeah, yeah, yeah you okay, met her. okay. And I went okay. over to her place. And I actually like pulled. I was like, it's been 10 years. Let's look through the photos. And we actually had did a you? nice time. And, and she finally was like, that was the best. That I'm, trip I'm was the best. I'm torn on taking pictures. I was talking to these like these backpackers. And it's like, you want, you want to stop and ruin the moment. I do have some Israeli chick told me this. She goes, put yourself in every picture or in a lot of pictures. Because the idea of taking a picture, it's like National Geographic has that picture of that place. But you and whoever your travel friend is, even if you just know them for a week, it's like, oh yeah, there's that guy from fucking Montana. That's where he put. Then you look through it, and it does remind you. Ten years later, it puts you back there. In a That's second. That's the thing, and I think about this with photos. We talked about ego earlier. You have to take photos for yourself, not for the ego, because you want to be like, I want to show people this, but it's for you. It's for you. To and look I back do that on. when I did the Louis tour in 2017 all over Europe. I took photos of every hotel. Because your memory is not reliable. It's like you have the photo. Like Then when you see the photo, you're like, I remember that bedspread. Right. I remember how that felt. Right. That was that weird shower. That's It's not present. you got to take the photos to assist your yeah, fucking remember memory. This place. And then that thing of like iPhone will be like memories, you know, it'll just pop something up. Temp- and you're like, oh, yeah. I just had one, you, me, and Isabel on Mount Royale. And you had your head shaved. Oh. Fucking weird. Um, oh, yeah. And then you farted in my face. <laughs> In front of a friend we had just made. <laughs> I was yeah. like, come on. <laughs> Good times. I was like, we've known this person for six hours. Good times. Um, anyways, that was great. Um, Joe, reach out to him. if you. Just say thanks for taking me if you appreciated this. Uh, he's on uh, Instagram. He's still on Twitter. At Joe List Comedy, yeah. Uh, mistake, but like it's fine. I heard it's getting better. Oh, you're one At of Joe people. List Comedy. Uh, Instagram, at Joe List Comedy. 
Yes, right? at Joe's um, Comedy. And, uh, and see his multiple specials you can watch now, uh, this year's material. And um, I, hate I hate myself, both on YouTube. He's one of the best comics in the world. You guys, there's zero chance you're not going to love it. Um, Appreciate it. And a fucking, and a, for our purposes, a glorious traveler in the comedy world that sees very few of them. Um, buddy, thanks. Yeah, that was thank a, you. That was a fun listen. Yeah, it was great to, uh, great to recall all that. Yeah. Good life. Long life for you. Until next time, everybody. Well, that's the episode, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Man, that was great. That's that's what this podcast is all about. A, a great trip. It took you there. You could almost see it in your mind. You could almost see it in your mind, Machu Picchu, and the road up there while going on an adventure. No one had that experience in Machu Picchu like Joe List had. Um, you want to subscribe to the YouTube. You want to watch these on YouTube because the pictures he took it really set it off there, and you'll see all those on YouTube. But if you're listening, it's also great. Guys, don't forget to go see my taping of my new stand-up comedy special. It's the only thing I truly care about. Uh, it's the only thing keeping me here and not having me travel all around to Machu Picchu myself is stand-up comedy. Washington, D.C., April 26th, we added. April 27th is almost sold out. Get tickets right now at ariashafir.com, as well as all my shows. We added a show in Halifax, second show in Halifax. Um, man, that was great. Go check out UB Chip and Pod on socials and next week well not next week this week we're completing a, we're almost done with the two a week for the first month David Tell the amazing David Tell who has a new special out check out Joe List specials on YouTube right now he's got three of them on there uh, and I have one Jew uh, but David Tell will be coming in uh, to talk about USO entertaining troops all over the world at army bases it's a, I always wanted to do one of those and I never did Dave came in and told me about it. I rented out a, a weird new studio to make sure he was able to... He couldn't come to the one I had before. So I managed to get him in a strange place. But uh, make sure to tell Joe List you enjoyed the episode. Leave a comment on YouTube or on UB Trippin' Pod on the posts. The YouTube, I uh, will check out those comments and reply to them as much as I can. Tell me how your trip was to Machu Picchu or if you have any uh, tips yourself for that same country. Um... Yeah, I'm getting a kick out of seeing you guys right in. Tell me what you've done in those places. And, and man, I'm telling you, when I go, this, this stuff's going to get in my head. I'm going to check out a lot of these recommendations. A lot of them. That's it, guys. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm really having a good time with this. We're getting over 100,000 views on every episode. I don't know whether the Kevin Ryan one got flagged for inappropriate comment content, but like the rest are great. Um, it's really kicking off strong. I hope you guys are... It sounds like you're really enjoying it. I really am, too. Anyway, that's the episode. Thank you, Joe List, for coming in. Um, and, guys, I'll see you out on the road. Uh, uh, no. Hasta, 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 hasta luego. That's, yeah, hasta luego.